This is Matt Cohen for Matt Cohen Photo Workshops. If you want more information, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. This is another in the series of critiques of people who have attended the workshops. Um, this is from Gilroy. This is Jake. Jake probably has the least experience of the people that have been to my workshops. And so it's really rewarding to be able to see what even, you know, just saying small, obvious things, things that are obvious to people who shoot all the time, make a big difference because he can go from, you know, pretty low baseline to even just having a tiny little bit of guidance can make better pictures. And so we saw that, um, you know, on, on Friday, he was really struggling with the light, he was struggling with his gear. And I think, you know, just, um, you know, a couple of tips here and there and a couple of suggestions um, really got him to a, a much, much higher level than on Sunday than he was on Friday. So let's take a look at these. <clears throat> so this was Friday night and this was a good idea, you know, using the light coming through here, but it just ended up being too close to where he was. So he cut off the head. Um, you know, this is fine. He was shooting with a zoom also. So, you know, maybe it's just a matter of having your hand on the lens in a way that you can kind of get through the whole motion with one, you know, one turn. Um, so that when, you know, this looks like it was pretty far down the arena. So you want to make it to the point where even if they come that close to you that you can zoom out and still get a better shot than cutting them off at the shoulders like here. But the instinct was good shooting this way where, you know, all the lights coming onto these benches is all reflected because the sun is over here and it's just not able to get over onto the benches, but it is able to get through this. So this is all direct light and that's cool. You have the Sep the separation due to depth of field, and then you have the separation due to the sun hitting all of this, but not hitting all of this. So, um, yeah, just preparation, knowing the lens that you have on, and knowing the distances involved, and knowing how can you get from you know maybe 200 to 70 or something. So, keep that in mind um, when you're doing it. Um, so again, I, I mentioned that Jake was having some some trouble with his gear and focusing it's tough to have new gear and to be learning it and then to go and shoot live things where people are going to be looking at your pictures after. So you don't want to, uh, you know, buy new gear, whether it's even a lens or a new body or something like that, and then rush out to a good opportunity. Like I'm, I'm not saying like, if you, let's say you shoot your kids practice or something like that, then it's fun. That's a great place to test it out because nobody's really going to care one way or the other, but you want to be really familiar when you're going to something like a workshop or something where you're getting paid or something where somebody's going to be looking at those pictures and making a judgment based on you after that. So this is good in that Jake recognized that he could get a picture out of this, but either his settings or his manual, uh, you know, just how he was able to uh, work his fingers around the camera to get it in focus kind of failed him here um, You know, you can see he was shooting at 1.8 and So where's the focus? It looks like it's on the scene here And then because his face is like, you know, a few inches closer or something. It's just not in focus, right? So That's a problem. It's not a problem that can be solved, you know, by converting it to black and white. So um, you know the thought process would have been here, like, okay, I, I blew the focus, but I know what I'm doing. I can fix it for the next time. Um, I would also have looked at this horse trailer and saw that all there's all this space in here behind him, and I would have moved a couple steps over so that you were shooting this way, and so the horse trailer wasn't in the background. I'm not saying you can't have anything in the background, but this doesn't look like it was meant to be here. If there was another one over here, or if there were rows of them or something, and this was just one component in all of that, then okay. But the way it is there, it just looks thrown together and I don't know, not good enough. Also the, you know, never forget, this has to be in focus, it just has to. 
Um, I don't have any complaints with this one at all. Like, obviously, it's not a, a straight-up bucking kind of picture, but again, this horse, this is a, the wild horse race. It doesn't have a flank strap on, so this is basically what it's going to look like. It's not going to be trying to kick because there's no flank strap on. It's just, um, you know, how, how much can this guy hold on? So what's good about it? Well, there's good separation, again, lighting-wise and distance-wise between uh, the cowboy and the horse in the background. So none of this is in focus enough to be distracting. It's not bright enough to be distracting. So it's just a clean action picture. And for what is it, it's totally fine. Um, I don't, you know, there's, could it have been, you know, more dramatic if there was a wreck? Could it have been more dramatic if the horse was jumping higher? Yeah, all of those things can always be true, but did you do the best you could with, you know, where you were in the gear that you had? And I think that you could say that Jake did the best he could in this situation. Um, you know, it would have been better if the horse was closer. It would have been better if it was doing something more dramatic. So you just have to kind of keep those things in mind. Like, you shouldn't be trying to make more versions of this same picture because this is it. You want to make better versions of this picture or figure out a way to either shoot with different gear or get yourself closer or you know when there's better light like they didn't do the wild horse race on friday night but they you know they did it in the middle of the day so this is what you're stuck with and when that's the case then this is the best you can do so these two um you know, again, a little bit of a focus problem. It's it's not, this is not a throwaway. Like, this could just be a little bit sharper, right? You can see that, you know, maybe the focus went to the saddle here. Like, this looks to be a little bit more in focus, but it's not, it's not a throwaway. So the timing is good. You have the sun coming through the dirt. The horse is stopping. You can see the, the back leg stopping like that. So this is all fine. This is, again, um, this is not... Uh, complicated or very difficult like once you know how to use your gear pictures like this just come you can look around and say you know given a, a set of calves this is probably where the guy on the horse is going to rope them and catch up to them so once you have a little bit of experience you can figure out generally where they're going to stop and then getting a picture like this really isn't all that difficult it's how can you change the equation how can you get closer to this how can you shoot it from an angle where Maybe the distance from you isn't um, the most important thing. Look for a better background, look for better light, those kind of things. But when you can do this, then, you know, you just, you get good enough at this that you say, okay, well, I have that. And then what's the next thing to work on? I'm not saying you need to abandon pictures like this, but this is easy. Like, you know how to do this, so you don't really need to spend a ton of time doing it. Um, you know, this is more or less the same. It's like a, a higher exposure than this one. I don't know what accounts for that. Um, uh, it's okay. So it's wider. He let more light in. This is at 2.8 and this was at 3.2. So again, there's more light coming in and then the shutter was also open longer. So that would account for the, the difference. Um, I don't really mind it. It's, you know, the, the right exposure is probably somewhere in between the two of these. You kind of lose the hat a little bit here, but then the face is a little bit too dark here. So I don't know, maybe if you had left it at uh, 250th, but then made this one um, 3.2, one, yeah, 1 2500th and then 3.2, this one probably would have been exposed properly. But anyway, you know, this is the same picture, right? It's, you just waited a little bit till his legs started coming over, but um, it's mostly the same and it's the same skill and it's the same, you know, all the same thought went into it as as did this one. So again, you have this. The only other thing to do is get it when there's a situation where you can be closer, get it in a situation where um, the light is better. But, you know, as far as like getting more versions of just this, you, you don't really need to do that. Um, this is kind of cool in the in the same way that um, the Dan's was. Let's, let's go back and look at Dan's um, version of this. So the reason that Dan's is better, um, I like the way the light is, so it's like underexposed more. It's a faster shutter speed. Um, and I like the depth. So there's just more depth here. Like the because you can tell that the, the dirt is in focus here and out of focus here. This is in focus and all of this is out of focus. He's out of focus. It's just there's more cues for the depth in it. And then when you look at Jake's, it's like, you know, pretty blown out. And then this is in focus, but this isn't in focus. And then 
I don't know, there's no part of the dirt really that's the same distance away as these hooves are. So, um, you know, the, the things that work together here, like the zones of being in focus and out of focus and the way the light is and the way the things are arranged are not working as well in this one because even though there's nobody kind of poking up into the frame here, that probably would have helped for depth wise. And, you know, just the angle of this, like I would say to a certain extent, you just got unlucky because if this horse had been bucking more sideways or sideways this way, or if it, the front legs had been stretched out more, this probably wouldn't have been a better picture, but as it is, it just didn't work out well because again, there's only one thing that's in focus, the, you know, the back legs of this horse. And like by the time you get anywhere else in here, it's all out of focus. So that's why that one doesn't work. Uh, same thing here, but worse because it's further away, right? Um, if the horse had been doing something like this, but closer, then, you know, there might have been something there. But this angle going away from you, and again, anytime you're shooting Bronx, the most likely thing that's going to happen is they're just going to go away from you really quickly. So you have to have a plan, either be shooting with a longer lens than you think you would need because they're going to be further away by the time you get a good shot at it. You know, when they, when they take a couple steps and then really start bucking, um, you know, or just be in a different spot. So once it gets this far away, there's very little that can happen that would really be worth shooting. Again, focus problems here and a little bit of a composition problem here. If you were working around the edges, you could have gone, um, well, first you would have noticed this, but you know, that can be cropped out. So I'm not worried, but you would go here. Okay. 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 And then you come down here and it's like, okay, what is the purpose for the horse being this out of focus and this cut off here? And I would say there's probably not a good use for that. So if you were just doing a, a portrait, then you make a vertical out of it and just do this. And if you want to fit more of the horse in to give it more context, then you do that. Um, but you don't want to cut it off this awkwardly here. And you always want to make sure that, especially when something's moving, that you want the focus to be on the face instead of where it is, which appears to be on the ropes in his hand. Um, so Jake asked me if he could send series, and I think this was to kind of give him an idea as to, you know, maybe how to pick the best one out of the series, which is, you know, if you shoot a burst, it is, you don't want to show people, oh, I got 15 pictures of this rack. You want to say, this is the best picture of the rack and don't divide their attention over 15 pictures to say, yeah, I'm, I made these pictures and I'm telling you, this is the best one in the series. Look at it or don't look at it. So there's a depth of field problem here again, in that you have his back, right? Not his front. And the only things that are in focus are like his legs and the back of him and the back of his hat or whatever. And all of this stuff is all out of focus. And because, you know, of the way, like there's not, there's no separation. There's no sky in between the bull and him. It just kind of all blends into one thing. And this, this area here is just not visually pleasing, even though he's in focus. Like you would want a little bit more separation, either having him coming around from this side where you could see him completely against the sky or... You know, if there had been a little bit, if he had been over a little bit further, it just would, you just would have ended up with a better picture. It just got lumped. The center mass of all of these things got lumped all together. So even though this is kind of a crazy thing, it's out of focus and it's small and it's in the background. So it just doesn't work. This is largely the same. Um, you, the bull's head did come into the frame here. So this is closer. Like this is a significantly better picture than this one just because the the way the bull's body kind of comes around this way um, is definitely more visually pleasing. And it, it gets the bull out from the boundary between the guy and the bull. So there's that separation here. That's, they're two distinct shapes instead of just being all one shape here. Um, but the problem is you lose a little bit of focus here and you don't really make it up here. Like the ideal version of this picture would have been at, I don't know, f5 or 5.6 or something like that because at this point you all of these things are close enough together and they're all like the same importance or whatever i would rather either you know if you couldn't have just cut it off like this would have been the best thing if you had zoomed in to 200 or something and made the picture about this because this isn't going to work because this is out of focus enough that it doesn't look good and this is completely out of focus but if you had been shooting at 200 and came away with this picture in focus right with this background and everything and this would have been totally fine but because 
what you're doing is, inc in, you know, putting this in here, which is still not critically in focus. Like it looks like the dirt here and the dirt here. These are the, the parts of it that are in focus. Um, but you can just see how the, the way that these three things relate to each other in this picture is better than how they relate to each other in this one. So let's, let's take a look at it side by side. Right, you can just see, you can just see how this is more visually pleasing. Even though they would both be better if they were in focus, the way things are laid out in this frame is just better all the way around than this one. Um, so this one again, you know, the horse's head being on the ground. I know it seems like an arbitrary kind of thing, but you can either take my word on it or not take my word on it. It's completely up to you. I would prefer if you took my word on it because it'll just cause you and me all less trouble, but that's up to you. Um, this is better, I guess, if you wanted to even, you could even cut the bull out of this if you wanted to. Like, let's say you were, you know, you were a little bit worried about, you know, where the bull was and everything, then you could just do it like this. Um, this is just enough out of focus that it's just a little bit soft. It looks like the focus was here. And by the time it gets here, it's just not, it's just a little bit too soft. Um, but again, if you had zoomed in and just done this, it probably would have been a lot better. And, you know, this is the same, like, I don't know, it's, it's hard because they're out of focus and it's hard because of the, um, the bull being on the ground like that. Um, you know, is this, is this the best version of it? Probably. still out of focus, right? It's, yeah, it's tough. This is dramatic. You probably could have gotten away with this uh, because you can't really see what's going on here. Um, but it's just out of focus. You just you, you can't put this up for people to see because then it's you saying, hey, look at my out of focus picture. You just don't want to do that. So you have to, you have to take the loss. But um, I would say that if we're talking about the, what's going on here? Yeah, this is the same. This one might be a little bit more in focus. No. Okay, so it's just blown. But I would say this and this are the two best. Um, again, because of the, the way these things relate to each other, the way the bull is coming across, and the way that it's the closest to looking in focus because it's further away. Like the focus is probably the same relatively on these two. But because you're asking somebody to look at a much smaller part of the picture, the part of it that's out of focus stands out more. The other ones just don't work as well. This one again, um, this is better because of the, you know, like if we were talking about, um, was it one of Dan's? Yeah. So let's look at Jake's picture here and this Dan's picture here. Like look at how this isn't quite in focus and this isn't out of focus quite enough. And then you look at Jake's and this is completely in focus and this is, a combination, it's not completely out of focus, but there's enough dirt in there that kind of washes it all out so that there's distance separation a little bit, but there's also light separation and size separation here. So these two are kind of the same pictures, but this one is just better because he nailed the focus here and this is far enough away that it's out of focus. So, you know, look at those two side by side, no, can't do it side by side, but, um, you know, look at this one and see how it's soft here and see how this is almost the same level of softness. And then you look at this one and this is sharp and this is soft the way it should be. So this is good. Um, this is just, you know, like this is a series, right? These two. Um, I like this one better because I like the legs up here and I like it just, there's more conflict. Like you have his hand, but it's not getting swallowed up again because of the, the way the light is wrapping around. It's defining the edges. So it's not like those other ones that we looked at where there was nothing defining the edges. There's total definition here. It's totally fine. But then when you go to this one, you lose his hand. And then th this is lower and you see less of the bull rider and you see less, um, you know, I like how you have the back leg here and like the way his body is. So personal preference, but I think this one is better than this one. This is great. I really have no 
you know, nothing to say about this. It's about as good as you can do about somebody being dragged through the mud from behind like this. Um, you have the, the, you know, could you have been a little bit lower? Yeah, a little bit. Could you have been pointing down a little bit lower so that you had more of the dirt down here and less of this up here? Yes, you could have. But this stuff happens very fast. Like he was actively being dragged here, so you just react and do the best you can. You did get the focus right because it's here in the hat and it's here on his shoulder, and then all the rest of it is out of focus. There's good separation because of the distance. There's good separation between the light not hitting directly this side of things and the light hitting directly here. So this is good. Um, <laughs> this was a picture. This is a good, a good lesson here, right? So if you're a rodeo person, you look at this picture and you're like, what the hell is going on here? And if you're a photographer, you look at this picture and you say, what the hell is going on here? But they're both doing it for completely different reasons. If you're a rodeo person, you see that this is a steer wrestling steer because it doesn't have the protective headgear on and this guy doesn't have a rope, so it can't be team roping. And so then you look at it and it's like, okay, well, he's definitely steer wrestling and this would make him the hazer, but the hazer doesn't usually have a rope and the hazer is usually you know over here keeping the, the steer going straight and he's behind and he's carrying a rope. Um, so this picture kind of went bananas on Facebook because... The guys who were in it thought it was funny, and their families and everybody who knows them all thought it was funny. Like, why is he on a calf roping horse, and why is he swinging rope like he's um, team roping, and why is this guy uh, using him as a hazer, right? But photographer look at it and say, okay, the ground is not straight up, and when you try to make it straight up, you're losing a leg like that. So you're, you're making a bad choice, right? It's either going to be the horizon is straight or you're losing a leg. But when I look at this picture, I see the, the guy who's, you know, mostly focused on the picture is out of focus. And even the guy who's doing something crazy is still out of focus. All of this is out of focus. The focus is going back to the shoot, right? It's going back to this part of the shoot. So again, you just have to know your gear. You have to know how it reacts, how quickly it can refocus. You have to, you know, figure out how to set it up so that either you're focusing with your thumb or you're good enough with your index finger to focus and shoot at the same time. Um, but all of those things need to happen before we can start talking about a picture being good or bad. It just has to be in focus first. Um, this is fine. This is out of focus, but there's enough going on. He's close enough to you, and this is close enough to being in focus that I, you know, I'm not going to quibble with this. Like it's not exactly in focus, right? The focus seems to have gone to this part of the saddle and the pad. Um, it's closer than the other ones. It's close enough to, I guess, be acceptable. Um, you know, if you got a print or something like that, but you really want to work on nailing the focus and not letting you know other things get in the way and kind of take your take the camera's focus away from what it should be focusing on but as far as a moment as far as you know how you arrange things in the frame how close you are to it the anticipation all of that is good yeah this is really good i have a a little bit different version of this picture i guess we were probably very close when this was happening um but this is good i like you know how the, the dirt is coming up and you've got good separation you got a good um you know, her, her expression is good and it's in focus. And so this is good. I don't have any complaints with this one either. Maybe a little bit overexposed, maybe the highlight a little bit blown out for a hat. If you brought down the highlights, it would give you a little bit more of a pop, you know, the way her hat shows up against the background. I would say maybe do that. Um, yeah, this is just a composition problem. If you're you were at 200 with a 70 to 200. I, I don't want to see things cut off for no reason. If you have to cut them off, if what's going on in the picture is so crazy that something gets cut off, then okay, we'll work with that. But there's just no good reason for you to be at 200, but still cutting this off and still having a little bit up here. This is fine. Like the way the rope is and the, you nailed know, the focus and her face and the way the light is coming through her hair like that. It's all good. But I don't know. I would have, you know, kind of zoomed out as she was getting closer and you know made sure that you weren't cutting her off like if you wanted to cut her off at the feet or something that's one thing um if you wanted to cut her off here so that it was just her face and the rope or something that's something else but you can't leave the whole rest of the horse in and then cut it off at the hose 
Uh, kind of the same here. Again, you have to get better when you're shooting with a zoom. The reason that it zooms is that it gives you that opportunity. So you want to take it and get really good at anticipating, like as something's getting closer to you, knowing how much you're going to turn it. Um, if it's not getting closer to you and you just want to zoom out, you have to know how to do that. If somebody gets bucked off and they're going from a place where everything was all in one place to going, you know, everything is in different places. You have to be used to zooming out to be able to get all of that in. And you didn't really have to, you could have just cropped it. Um, you could have just cropped it here if you wanted to, like there's nothing wrong with that. Focus a little bit. Um, you're just gonna have to work on that or you're gonna have to get better gear. You can't keep doing this, right? If it's possible to get better at, at this with this gear, then you should do that, like working the settings and maybe reading and practicing about it. But if this is the limit of the gear that you're at, this is not gonna be good enough to miss this many pictures. So either through getting better at what you have or getting better gear in general, you're gonna have to solve this problem one way or the other because you just can't, you don't wanna waste opportunities like that, even at this early stage. Um, you know, this is just, you know, kind of the same. Is this better? Is this one better? Well, you have more of his face here, but he's also further away and like completely disconnected from the horse here. So again, the, the best version of this is in between, I guess. Yeah. Buck offs happen all the time. You really, you know, just sit on it, figure out, you know, your fo focusing issues and you'll, you'll be able to get these pictures. If you can do this, you can get a good version of it given the, the work that you put in on the focusing system. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this at all. Um, you know, the this is like a kind of a classic, this is a classic saddle bronc picture. Bronc rein, hand, um, you know, the, the mane sticking out like this, and then the horse is off the ground and it's kicking, so this is all fine. Again, once you can do this, you don't really have to do very much else. You can still make these pictures, but it's certainly not going to be challenging you. Like, this is what it is. It doesn't, like a, a straight up bucking picture is always going to look more or less like this. Same here. Um, you know, again, a little bit of a problem because you were at 200 and you still clipped off his hand. These things happen, but you just want to minimize that, especially when it's as easy as either zooming out or pointing up a little bit, but you just you want to get careful enough that you're not making these mistakes. Um, it looks like, so the other pictures that he was struggling on with the focus, it looks like those issues have really fixed themselves. Um, maybe not on that, but um, you know, on, on these pictures where he was struggling with the focus, these were all on Saturday. And then um, these two, which are definitely all the way in focus were on Sunday. So I'm hoping that that was something that he just made an adjustment and was, was getting better um, for those. And then this one is just like a worse version of this because you, you, you know, you're cutting off the, the end of it. Um, and you're, you're losing the bottom of the dirt to show what the horse is actually doing. So this, this one is the best, and then this, and then this. The same here, you're just cutting off different various points um, and not zooming out. So you wanna zoom out when you get to that point. Um, and then this one, you know, this, I wanted to like this one, I wanted this one to work out because, you know, this would have been like, you know, the, the blind squirrel getting the nut on the first night. Um, the reason this picture doesn't work is because of the angle that you're at. And this is, you know, if this is just one of those things you're gonna to have to learn I don't tell you to get on the ground to make you uncomfortable or to make you look funny or to get you dirty or whatever. I get you on the ground because it gives you another option of how to arrange things in the frame. So if you were all the way down on the ground, down here, this sun would have been coming through these people, but it also would have been illuminating more of this. You would have, this part of it would have been higher up and the, you know, this cool kind of wraparound light would have reached lower. That's what you want. There's just barely not enough definition going on. There's not enough separation between, again, the light that's hitting back here. This is all still not getting any direct light at all. This is not getting any direct light at all. So your only light source is the sun, and most of the frame is only lit by the rims, right? So just this little trickle of gold that's coming around the outside. And, and if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have anything. But if you had gotten you know, another six or 12 inches lower, you would have gotten that way more because the stands would have been lower in the frame and this would have been higher in the frames. It's just geometry. It's just 
the angle that you, if you were down here shooting up versus you know being here and shooting straight you know into the background so the idea was good right you put the sun in the frame you got the right exposure you know given um you know these people and even this for a silhouette but you were just too high to arrange the the steer to be in the path of the sun and to get more of that definition so i, I hope that that's clear enough that you can use a situation like that to decide am i low enough to get the geometry right because that's what this is it's just a geometry problem the low angle makes this higher in the frame which makes this lower in the frame so you just because of the relative distances away from you. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you can make a better version of this the next time you have a chance. And that is it for Jake's pictures. Hopefully everybody learned something for this one. Um, if you want more information, you can go to mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. I have some more coming up pretty soon. You can sign up to get information and you can get links to the videos. Um, if that's not there, it will be there. And Again, if you have any questions, you can contact me through mattcohenphoto.com slash workshops. Thank you for watching.